So we've been on a series, right? Right, we've been on a series, and the series is God is on the move, right? We've been on it for a, a lengthy period of time. Uh, and so today is a conclusion of it. Uh, I, I am, uh, I'm excited about the message, but I'm also a little bit sad that we're, it's coming to a conclusion. But I know and I trust and I've heard from many of you that this message has been challenging you and, 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 and been a catalyst for you to grow with God and take this step forward with God. And so today we're going to be starting, uh, or, or not starting, but we're going to be ending the message with uh, let's move. So let's move. Somebody say, so let's move. God is on the move, so let's move. So we are going to move with him today. So um, uh, we have a, we've been traveling uh, recently, uh, Pastor Christina and I, and we have a credit card. And on this credit card, one of the perks that you get is, is that you have access to airport lounges. And airport lounges are the best, okay? And so uh, we were, our hearts and our lives were opened up to this just recently in a new way. And so uh, in one of our travels, we go to the airport and we have a little bit of a time buffer there before the next connection. So we go there and uh, instead of just sitting down on a chair, struggling to find a charger and going through all this stuff, uh, went to my phone and said, cool, like we have access to a lounge. So I, we go to the lounge, they look us up, they open us in, and it's like literally like we walked into the gates of heaven. <laughs> like everything, there's food everywhere. There's these wonderful seats and char chargers. Char you know, it, it's a commodity to find a charger in an airport. I've seen like near fist fights over a charger at an airport for one that works. You know, a lot of times they don't work, right? So uh, we go there, and they first they bring out the desserts, and I'm not like a big dessert guy, but as of recent, I am more so than than before. And, and so uh, I, I, I still had some, and they had uh, uh, cappuccinos and lattes ready to made with the barista there. I was like, man, this is amazing. So you just order. I'm I'm waiting to pay. He's like, no, nah, it's all good. It's on the house. Like it's it's covered with 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 the, with the club room. I'm like, cool. You know what the street rate is for a latte? Like that is a deal. So we're enjoying our time. And then they rolled out some food. I was like, man, they got this keeps getting better. This is like heaven. Like, I mean, we're enjoying these meals and coffee and sitting down and enjoying ourselves. It was so comfortable. And I tell you what, we had a flight to go somewhere, but man, it was hard to leave that place. It was really hard to leave that sea, to leave that unlimited food, and it, it was hard to leave that. But you know what? The, the lounge wasn't the final destination. There was another destination, but oftentimes in life, we can get so caught up in the lounge, enjoying the comforts and the trimmings of whatever part of life that we're in, we don't move on to what God has ahead of us. You know, there is a destiny and a plan that God is taking you on. He's moving you forward, but oftentimes we can find ourselves in the lounge, chilling like it's the final destination. And God's like, come on, we got to go. Like, there's a flight to catch. We need to get ready. We need to get going. We need to leave some comforts behind for the future and the purposes that I have ahead of you. Amen? So when God is on the move, he's calling us to move. So there is a time when we park and we get comforted and we rest, and there is a time to move. And so God is moving. Amen? All right, Lord, I pray that you would encourage us, empower us with your gracious and powerful word, Lord. Cause us to experience your goodness through your written word so that the spoken word would move in the hearts of people today, Lord. Cause us to move. God, cause us to be uncomfortable today in our situations and where we're at. To be propelled to see the future that you have ahead of us. In Jesus' name, we all said amen. amen. So today I'm going to take you all back to the book of Deuteronomy. All right, so we're going to be in Deuteronomy. We'll read there from just a moment, but let me set it up for you. The uh, uh, Deuteronomy, the word Deuteronomy means second law. It means second law. And so Moses is uh, in the book of Deuteronomy. He's retelling the law to a new generation of Israelites in the plain of Moab. So he's retelling the law. He's recapitulating the law that was already given. And in this new generation, they're preparing to enter uh, the promised land by Moses, begin by looking back at key moments from this journey, specifically, uh, uh, you know, at a time when this first generation, so he's speaking to the second generation, but he's speaking uh, uh, to the second generation about the first generation when they're at Mount Sinai. 
And this group of individuals, having been liberated to cross, to, to, to come uh, out of Egypt, crossing the Red Sea, and they journeyed through the wilderness, but failed to step into the promised land. And due to their unbelief, their rebellion, and their lack of trust, and yes, grumbling, God doesn't like a grumbler, right? And so now the new generation is being called to, to take action. He's calling them to take action and fulfill what their parents did not. And Moses recounts the original command out at Mount Sinai to break camp and move forward into the land that's promised. Now, as we're in this New Testament and we're looking back through the Testament of, uh, through the lens of the New Testament and the blood of Jesus, Jesus is the promised land. Do we understand that? That he is the one, he is the promise that is fulfilled. It's not just about a geographical location. It is about a person, the person of Jesus Christ. It is fulfilled in him. And so as we read in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 6 through 8, I want everybody to stand up and I'm going to read for us. All right, y'all ready? Okay. Deuteronomy 1, 6 through 8. When we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, you have stayed at this mountain long enough. It's time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorites and to all the neighboring regions, to Jordan, to the Jordan Valley, to the hill country of western foothills, to Negev and the coastal plains, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon and to all and all the way to the great Euphrates River. Look, I'm giving all this land to you. Go in and occupy it, for it is a land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to all their descendants. This is the word of the Lord. We all said, amen. You may be seated. So I want to go through this passage again. Uh, Moses is addressing this second generation uh, about the first generation that has died in the wilderness. And so verse 6 says, when we were out Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, you have stayed at this mountain too long. My first observation is the danger of staying too long. The danger of staying too long. And so Moses is reminding this new generation of how the first generation had stayed too long at Mount Sinai. And you see, Mount Sinai is significant. It's also called Mount, uh, Mount Horeb and Mount Sinai. It's significant because it's on this mountain, Mount Sinai, that God was encountered by Moses and he encountered the people. Moses received the Ten Commandments. They were established as the covenantal people of God. Uh, the a tabernacle was constructed for worship. The priesthood was established. That the people were organized. Mount Sinai was a very significant place. And it symbolized, listen to this, it symbolized a season of instruction and intense spiritual formation and growth in their life. But he says, you have stayed here long enough. Now, it's nothing wrong with Mount Sinai, but it is holy and it was transformative. But the journey with God must go on. The journey with God must go on. It must continue on. It was never intended to be a permanent place of resting, but a place of preparation. Oftentimes we take a place of, uh, uh, of resting as a permanent place, and it's not. It's a place of preparation for where God is taking you and leading you. The danger of staying too long is it can rob us of the plans and purposes that God has over our life. The danger of staying too long is that it can rob us of the plans God has prepared for ahead of us. Where in your life have you stayed too long? Where in your life have you stayed too long? Are you still living off past spiritual experiences and encounters with God? That one time I had an encounter with God in 1902, that was amazing. The glory days, we look at it as the glory days. Like, that's just a, pa a past blip in the screen, a, a day in the past. Oh, that time in camp. Oh, man, that was amazing. God encountered me so good. Like, well, what about the last 30 years? What about the last 10 years? And so uh, 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 that one time I served, yeah, I used to serve God back in college. Yeah, I just kind of grew out of it. What? Like, you grew out of serving God? <laughs> like, how, how does that happen? Jesus is the servant leader. <laughs> and we were trying to be like Jesus, we have to be like him. Or, or that one time that you led someone to make a decision for Christ, praise God. That was in fifth grade. 
I'm teasing. But look, this is what I'm saying is that those things are not to be looked down upon. You are to celebrate them. But God is calling you to move forward. Celebrate yesterday, but don't live off yesterday alone when God has tomorrow for you. Are y'all with me? See, God is always looking to move us forward. He's, he says in Genesis to be fruitful and multiply, to be fruitful, to move in advance. He says, go and make disciples of all nations. He's always moving us forward. He's saying from glory to glory. He's always from faith to faith. God is always moving us and propelling us forward in his passages or in his purposes. In this passage, the word go is used three times. The word move is used as well, too. And so God is calling you forward into the plans and purposes. This is what Ephesians says. Uh, this is how Paul, Apostle Paul puts it in Ephesians 2.10. He says, for we are his workmanship created by Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before that we should walk in them. That you are God's creative expression. That God is a master craftsman. And he's taken divine time out to craft a purpose, a plan over your life, to, to, to make a purpose for you, to, 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 to tailor something that only you could do, that the world needs, that you can only fulfill through the purposes and plans that he has laid out before you, that you should walk into them. The big danger is that when we stay too long, we miss out on the purposes and plans of the master craftsman. That, that God didn't create you so that he can put you up on a shelf, but he created you that you would fulfill his purposes. Are you with me? So the challenge is, is that where have you stayed too long? Where have you stayed too long? Whether it's in your faith, in your spiritual journey, in an area of your life. Where do you sense God moving you forward? Are we afraid to pray that sometimes? We're like, man, God's going to get up in my stuff. It's better to be show up in church and be like, blah, 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 blah. Like, I love you, Jesus. And like, so we don't want to hear him. But like, what if we really prayed with our arms and said, God, where do you want to move me? Some of y'all feel me on that, right? Sometimes we come in like, God, I, I'm not going to listen to you, but I am going to listen to you. But I'm not. And I'm going to praise you. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like you open up your heart to that. And so, okay, the, it's not enough to simply acknowledge it, but now we have to act on it, right? It's okay to be like, man, that's it. That's what it is. You walk out here like, I ain't doing that. Like, but there, there is an acting on it. And that takes us here to the ne next part of the passage. He says it's time to break camp and move on. So my next point is break camp and start moving in faith. Break camp and start moving in faith. The danger of staying too long. And to break camp and start moving in faith. See, after uh, they were freed from the tyranny and the, and the bondage of Pharaoh and Egypt, they moved from place to place. They were setting up and breaking down. Setting up and breaking down. God would move. They, they'd pack up. God would settle. They'd break down. They'd, they'd, see, look, they were like the first portable church. It's like, we're, we're, this is a biblical church, right? We're sitting up. We're tearing down. We're sitting up. <laughs> I think that was pretty funny. Like, it's, we, we're getting, we're, we're letting the Bible lead our ministry philosophy, right? For now, at least, till we get our own space, amen. Can I get another amen in the back? All right. He commands them, break camp. This is an intentional uh, uh, act of action and faith that he's commanding over them. He's saying, he's saying break camp. He's, he's telling them to take action, uh, embrace faith, move forward. And so it's not enough to recognize that it's time to change, but we must be willing to act. Faith is not measured by your mouth. It's measured by your movement. You can talk a big faith game, but if, them, if you ain't moving anywhere, then I, I really don't know what that is. That's a good, a, a good talking game. I don't know. Uh, faith is not measured by your feelings. It's measured by your feet. Unless your feet are moving, then your faith is not being activated. Uh, no matter how great your intentions are or how, how full of faith that you feel, if there is no action that is backing up behind that, then that's not really faith. Martin Luther King says it like this. He says, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. It's like taking 
the first step, even when you don't, you may see the first step, but you may not see the entire staircase, but you're still willing to take that step. It's about leaving comfortability and familiarity. It's hard, right? Isn't it hard to leave comfortability? Especially when the future is uncertain. And so, At Mount Sinai, they were somewhat settled in and comfortable and familiar and things were predictable. Look, this is the situation. They were fed by manna, holy bread. I'm I'm convinced it's Chick-fil-A nuggets. I could be wrong. (laughs) It's not in the Bible. It might be Chick-fil-A nuggets, but they were fed by manna, right? They, They... uh, their clothes and their possessions did not wear out. It says the scriptures that their, their shoes did not wear out. They were sustained supernaturally by God, and they were resting from their travels. And the Lord's covering was there, where uh, it would He would come by f- uh, fire at night to provide heat and light. Night vision goggles back in the ancient days, like they would see through the night by this fire and, and a cloud by the day, so that the blazing summer heat would not incinerate them. Look, this is like an ancient, all-inclusive resort for them. Everything is in, you got food, you got the sun when you want to, you got shelter, your stuff is, they, they, they're in a pretty good space. Granted, it's pretty uncomfortable to live out in the desert. Nonetheless, they got a good thing going on for their situation. And so Mount Sinai represents seasons where we may grow complacent and comfortable. Listen, comfort is not bad, but when your whole life is tailored around comfort, That's not good. And so there's a difference between experiencing times of comfort and and living for comfort, where we live our whole lives to be comfortable. We live in in a culture where our entire lives are built around comfortability and convenience. You want to go out to dinner? Sure. Nah, let's just get DoorDash. I want to stay in my pajamas. Like, uh... I'd see the kids lining up for the school bus in the morning when I'd leave the house in the morning. And I'm like, man, they, that's pretty cool, man. They, they got, you know, spirit week at, at school. They showing up, they showing up, and everybody's, like, committed, wearing their PJs and their Crocs to school. That is amazing. I roll around the next week. I'm like, man, this must be, like, an extended, like, uh, pajama day. Like, and then I'm like, hold up. Like, these kids are wearing PJs to school. What is happening? Like, are y'all going to a sleepover or are y'all, like, going to school? Because in my day, we fought, scrounged, stole whatever we did to wear our best outfits to school. And now you got kids wearing PJs and Crocs like they just rolled out of bed because they just did. And it's even on the kids. And you got athleisure where uh, you can't make up your mind. Are you going to work out or are you going to lay down on the couch? And you can actually buy clothes that to lay down on the couch are meant to go work out. Like, you buy a pair of yoga pants and you have no desire to do any type of yoga but to sit on the sofa. I'm not a proponent of yoga. We can talk about that later if you want. (laughs) Pastor, don't touch my coffee and don't touch my yoga. (laughs) We try to fit this comfortable life around a comfortable faith. We try to make our faith comfortable to us. Comfortable. Jesus never said it was to be comfortable. Jesus never said there's fake faith walk. He didn't die to make you comfortable. In fact, let me tell you what he did do. Matthew 16, 24. It says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Jesus is actually calling you to live an uncomfortable life in him. So that it's a big setup when you thought that Jesus came and lived and died to make you more comfortable. You have lost it, friend. Yes, you receive comfort in him, but this is the thing. As you deny yourself, Christ begins to be more and more formed in and through you. It's when you follow him, you deny yourself. It's where the scripture says, when I'm weak, I am now made strong. When I'm weak before the Lord, I am strong before men. That, That these chains of bondage that I used to have will now set me free as I deny myself and live for him. And so uh, the, the same things in my life that I thought when I was coming to Christ was like, man, I got to give up all of my liberties, all of my freedom. 
until I began to say, okay, maybe I'll just take this thing at face value and begin to deny myself. And then it came by revelation that the same things that I thought were my freedoms were actually the same things that were keeping me in bondage. Can I get an amen? The same things that I thought were my liberties were the same things I realized, man, that thing is really keeping me back and keeping me chained up. Deny yourself. Comfort is the enemy of spiritual progress. This is what Charles Spurgeon says. He says, uh, we will not wish he had made, we, we will not wish we had made more money, been more comfortable, taken more vacations, watched more television, or read more newspapers. But we shall regret that we have not, we have not been more passionately serving the Lord, labored for souls, and been more filled with his spirit. He puts it in priority at the end of life. Are we going to be like, man, I should have took that vacation, man. I had a chance. Like, I've, I've talked to people in their last moments on their deathbed, and they are not talking about their vacation. They are not talking about their 401K. They are not talking about their accomplishments. And this. They are talking about what they are celebrating and what they wish they had done that mattered for eternity. Are you all with me? He calls them to break camp, not only from comfort, but from anything that is hindering us from moving forward in his purposes and plans for our life. It may be bitterness. It may be anger. It may be spiritual coolness. It may be complacency. It may be regret. It may be disappointment. It may be fear. It may be addiction or self-pity. God is calling us to break camp from these things that are hindering us from moving forward in him. And staying at Mount Sinai would rob them of the purposes and plans that God has for them. In that same way, staying, staying camp too long will keep us from experiencing the fullness of what God has for, for us. And so what, comfort, what, what comforts or past experiences are holding you back from the things God wants to do in your life? What, what things, uh, what, what experiences, what things are holding you back from where you know that God is calling you towards? Is it that complacency? Is it the fear? I'm afraid that if I open up my life and ask God what I should do, he might make my life uncomfortable. He probably will. And it's very, very, it's very costly, but it's priceless. It will cost you something, but it is priceless, friends. There is nothing like it. There's nothing like stepping in what God has called you to do and living in the nearness of his presence. It's in the simplicity of the yes. Now it's time to break camp from those things. Break camp. Somebody say break camp. We need to break camp from these things. We need to pack up our stuff and say, I'm not staying here anymore. This lounge was great. I enjoyed it. The desserts were amazing, but it's time to go. I need to get my stuff, and I need to go because there's something better ahead of me. There, the, the, the moment here and the time here spent was nice, but I need to break camp, and I need to move forward to where God is calling me to move. Because when God is moving, let's move. And so it's recognizing a need to change and a need to break camp, but we must also take hold of God's promises. This is what it says here in verse 8. See, I have given you this land. Go and take possession of the land. And so here in uh, the last point that I have here is take possession of your promises. Take possession of your promises. When God spoke through Moses into the people, he wasn't telling them to create opportunities. He wasn't saying create your own destiny, blaze your own path, make your own way like the world tells you. He's not telling them to do He said, look, listen, I did all of the work. Just listen to what I say. Live it out, and there is something far better than you can ever imagine or even accomplish in and of your own strength. He said, I'm going to walk in, walk in what I've already done for in the w good works, as Ephesians says, that he has prepared for you and advanced. God's promises have already been given. It was theirs. All they had to do was walk in them. God already prepared the way. They had to step forward in faith to receive it. God prepared the way. What they needed to do was step forward in faith that he provided it for them. His promises work this way in our lives. We receive them. We embrace them. And we walk in them. We receive them. We embrace them. And we walk in them. We walk in the plans that he has laid out before us. 
There's a, a, a woman named Kathy Boone, uh, and she lived in uh, Astoria, Oregon, and she received an inheritance of nearly a million dollars. It was about 900, 800, some, some odd thousand dollars that was given to her by her mother. And the sad part of the story is that she didn't experience any of it. She actually died at a warming shelter without a home and without a dime to her name, all that was unclaimed. All this that was given to her but was unclaimed. Oftentimes we live our life as believers living like God has not done anything for us, that he has not provided and went before us and planned a purpose and a future and a plan and made a way even when it feels like there is no way. He has gone before you and what he's calling you to do is believe and trust and embrace his promises and walk and live like it. We're singing about God's faithfulness and my soul sings and bless the Lord on my soul. Forget not his benefits. We sing it and then as soon as the Christ out, we're like, oh, what's going to happen? Like, God, where you at? (laughs) Like, we just freak out. Why don't you just open our Bible and say, God, what are you saying about this situation through your word? Over 3,000 promises in the word of God. Which are you claiming right now in your life? Which are you embracing? Which are you trusting God for right now? Right now. What are you trusting God for right now? So I was encouraging them to embrace this, to believe this, to trust this. Ephesians 1.3 says it like this. says, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. We have been blessed with every spiritual. But listen, friends, you are not lacking in Christ. You are not lacking in blessings. You are not lacking in ability. You are not lacking any of those things When in Christ, when you place your faith in Jesus, you are thrusted into the life of Christ. So what's true of him now becomes true of you. The thing is that we still live according to our old selves and not what God has accomplished for us in the new. And So let me have the worship team come up if I can do that. As we close this series, uh, let's reflect on this journey that we've been on. Seeing how God moves and calls us forward, right? God's word to his people is clear here in Deuteronomy. He says that, hey, you have stayed at this mountain long enough. Break camp and move on. He's telling us the same today, friend. Listen, he's telling you the same today. He's telling you the same today. You have stayed too long at this mountain. Break camp and move on. Where in your life have you stayed too long, friend? Where in your life have you stayed too long? Is it comfort? You've been living for comfort and and organizing your life around comfort, your finances around comfort, your friendships around comfort, your spiritual walk around comfort. Is it it, uh, you stayed in this place of disappointment too long and God is calling and saying, let me walk you through this, but we maybe have have our arms folded and said, no, I'm fine exactly where I am uh, soaking in this disappointment when God is wanting to take you and move you forward out of it? Is it spiritual coolness where you once had a fire and a fervency for God, but now you're just like, uh, like I'm all right. Like, I'm good. I, I got my little routine going on. I don't really sense the presence of God as I used to or the nearness of God. I'm just kind of going through the motions. And you know what? Well, that's just good enough. I'm okay with being cool in my life right now. Maybe God is shaking you out of that right now. Maybe it's healing in your life that you need, the, the, the healing that you've been burying deep inside your soul, and, and, and God is wanting to address that and lead you and heal that with you. Maybe it's a little bit of counseling. Maybe it's starting with just giving it to the Lord. Maybe it's sharing it with a friend that you trust. Maybe that's the first step, but God is calling you and saying, you have been here too long. You need to move forward. There's much to do. That staying camped here at this mountain for too long is robbing you of all that I have ahead of you. So today as we're in this new space, don't let it just be a physical move, but let there be a spiritual move with God. Don't let it just be used changing addresses, moving addresses, maybe moving a garage. Let it be a movement of the posture of your heart today. Will you make that move with him and with this community? Or will it be the new place but same ways? 
Maybe God is calling you forward to say, hey, this is my time. I need to move forward. I need to start serving God. I, I, I know that I should. I know that he's been leading me to, but I just, I just don't feel like being uncomfortable. Like you got to wake up early and they got, me, they got meetings at church. Yes, I know. Like they got meetings. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's something like that. God is saying, you've been here way too long. Break camp. Let's go. So today, friends, I challenge you to, to break camp. Take that step of faith. It doesn't have to be a lot, it doesn't have to be a massive leap over the Grand Canyon. Maybe it's a baby step, maybe something small, but don't leave here today without taking or making a commitment to make that first step, friends.